Are you struggling with a date? No, not that kind of date. A date in your history syllabus. Because unlike your love life, there are too many dates in history, right? <laughs> in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to remember dates in history by comparing these methods to the type of people on dates. And which one are you? Let's find out. Hey everyone, this is Chetna and you're watching Chet Chat. And let's begin with my nine easy techniques to learn dates and a few bonus tips, which are going to make remembering history dates a walk in the park. <laughs> okay, why do I give you nine methods? Because a combination of a few of these are going to work out best for you. You know, something works best for one person doesn't work for everybody. So you take your pick. And don't forget to tell me in the comment section which technique you like the best. Technique number one, timeline is a lifeline. Have you ever met someone who tells their entire family history on the first date? Right from when your grandparents, parents, cousins, pets were born. Yap, yap, yap. <laughs> then let me tell you the secret of how you can do it too. Take a sheet of paper and start writing all the events in your textbook in a chronological order. So let's say you start from 1856, the General Service Enlistment Act and go right up to 26 January 1950, the First Republic Day. Now, once you have all these events before you, retain only the important ones. This is a key tip to reduce your own workload. Now, once that is done, divide the dates into groups. You can go year-wise, perhaps. So, let's say what happened in 1919. Rollet Act, Chalianwala Bagh Tragedy and the Government of India Act. Now, once you know the year, you can go for the month. Rollet Act was in March 19, Chalianwala Bagh in April 19 and the Government of India Act on December 19. The advantage of learning dates like this is that even if you forget the exact date or the month, you always kind of have the year and a reference point. It's also very useful when you have to solve MCQs. Even if you don't know the exact date of the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy, you know that it happened after the Rollet Act and before the Government of India Act. So you can estimate a guess based on these other events. When you make this list, you can also combine world history and Indian history together or make two separate lists. What I'm going to actually suggest to you is make two separate timelines, but always correlate them one with the other one. So when all this is happening in 1919 in India, what was happening in the world? Hitler was joining the German Workers' Party in 1919. This way, you have a bird's eye view of what is happening in history. And before we move on to technique number two, I want to give a shout out to our Tendil for leaving this super awesome message under my last video, which so many of you liked. And you know the shout out. If you want that in my next video, you've got to quickly comment below with the hashtag Chet Chatters. Technique number two is break it to make it. Now your first date went really well. At the end, they give you their phone number, but wait, you have nothing to write it down on. You really like this person, but how do you remember their number and all 10 digits in one go? I know, break it up into smaller batches of three or four numbers. You can do the same with your history dates. So let's say, the bombing at Hiroshima happened on 6th August 1945. You can remember this as 68 1945. This is a great trick if your numerical memory is really strong. Technique number three is Numbo Jumbo. Now let's say you're on a date with your girlfriend and she suddenly asks you the dreaded question. Do you remember the date we met? Now you're not good at remembering dates, but you kind of know how to spot patterns in numbers. You can use your own logic to arrive at the date. So for example, you get a question, what year was the forward block formed in? Now the answer is 1939. You can remember this as 19 
and its double is 38. But since it's forward block, you need to add one more to it. So that's 38 plus 1, 39. And there you have your answer, 1939. Basically, try to use the patterns in the numbers to get the date right. So if you want to remember, for example, the session of Congress, just remember the first one, the Surat session in 1907. Now, remove the 7. Which prime number comes after 7? 9. Add that and you get 1916 when the Lucknow session was held. Now, remove the 16 and add another prime number 13 to it. You get that 16 and 13 is 29. So, this was 1929. Easy, wasn't it? But, but wait, if all these numbers are making your head spin, I have something that might be more helpful for you. Words. When in doubt, rhyme it out. Are you someone who will write a romantic poem for your partner or compose a song on the guitar? So why not use sounds to remember history dates as well? Okay, let's make up some rhyming sentences and repeat them every day. I'm sure your own voice will come back to you in the exam. Let's take an example. Dandi March was very salty. It started on 12th March 1930. Or try this one. NATO was signed in 1949. Can you think of any more rhyming sentences? Let me know in the comments below. The next technique is story time. This one is for all the storytellers out there. So if anyone asks you, when did World War I start? You won't just give them a date, you'll tell them a story. World War I started when twin ate June by knife tea and fork tea. What does that secret code mean? It's the dates. Twin ate, 28 June by knife tea, 19 and 40. 14, 28 June 1914. Super easy, isn't it? I have another one for you. When did the partition of Bengal happen? When 16s opt for beer at 9 to 5. 16th October 1905. And when you're storytelling at your date, make sure to explain all the code words to your date. The next technique is me, myself and I. This is for all those people who love to talk about themselves on the date. My hobbies, my friends, my music. At least put all that minus to good use. You can associate the dates in your textbook perhaps to something personal like your age or your family and friends birthdays. So 24th October could have been my father's birthday and it's also the UN day. Makes sense because just like the UN, my father also makes all the rules in the house. Or maybe you're a Taylor Swift fan and you love her song Back in December, which was released in 2010. How can you associate that day? 10th of December, Human Rights Day. Totally apt because Taylor Swift sings so much about emotion and human rights, right? Do you know any other Taylor Swift songs and the numbers or months in the title? Let's see who's the biggest Swifty. Drop in your comments below right now. <laughs> the next technique is guess who. While some people just spill everything about themselves, there are the others who say guess. What's your favorite cuisine? Guess. And if you like to play these guessing games on a date, then you can use flashcards to guess and learn history as well. Now, take cards of different colors. Write the event on one side and the date on the reverse. So when you see Gutenberg Press, try to remember the date. Flip it over and see if you got 1448. Correct. First Tamil book, flip the card. 1579. First Malayalam book, Flip the card, 1713. Keep these cards stacked in a corner on your study table and play the guessing game with yourself every day till you've got it perfect. I spy. Here's the next technique for you. If you like to know everything about your date beforehand, so you can use your visual memory to remember dates. 
every week, write five events along with their dates on your whiteboard. Every day, your eyes will pass over these dates and it'll get stored in your visual memory. Next week, add five more events and dates. Soon you'll be able to visualize the date as soon as you see the question. Cool, right? The next technique is meet my family. Last but not the least, it's time to take your dating life to the next level. Involve friends and family. Scary. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure it'll turn out to be just great. In history also, you can involve your family and friends. Make learning dates into a fun game or a quiz. At breakfast table, each member can ask you one date. Give your grandmother all the dates from chapter 1. Your grandfather all the dates from World War II. And tell them to quiz you on it. And now finally for the bonus tips. But before that, let me ask you, what and why do you think dates are actually important? To get to know a person, right? Similarly, they aren't there to trouble students, but actually help you understand history better. Once you understand the cause and effect relationship, you will be able to remember your chapters better and understand the context as well. Not to mention, dates also make a great impression on the examiner. It shows that you have an in-depth knowledge of what you're writing. Keep these ground rules in mind while you're learning dates. Firstly, remember events first and then the dates, not vice versa. Because history is a collection of events. Learn the dates while you're revising a particular topic and that subtopic or an answer, not in isolation. Maybe there are some clues in the answer like the season, etc. which will help you remember the date. Next, if you don't remember exact dates, you can write general dates. For example, early 19th century or in the 1820s. And finally, not all dates are important. Pick the ones you have to memorize. That's it from my side. I hope you do well on your dates, both romantic and historical. Take care and happy learning.